and now it is time for the final reveal. Welcome I use sewing and DIY related content and today we are updating my bathroom for 2023. This is going to include some new hardware, painting the walls, hemming a shower curtain, we'll be showing you how to do that, a new shower curtain rod, and just really kind of giving this a refresh and update. I want to keep this as cheap as possible as well so here's a list of all the prices of everything on the screen. So with that said, let's get started and hem the shower curtain. So this is the shower curtain I want to use. We used it at a previous residence and I really loved it, but as you can see it has a lot of white space up top and our ceilings there were much higher than they are here. So what I'm going to be doing is hemming the shower curtain. Now if you also have a shower curtain that you're looking to hem because it's a little too long, there's two different ways you can kind of go about this. One is since you can see that it actually has a nice clean edge on the bottom, you could just kind of roll this up and determine however much you need to take off and then just fold this, so I'm going to do this on this like back part here, fold it up and then just take a straight seam all the way around. This is a really quick, really simple way that you could hem your shower curtain and still be able to use it if you move someplace like we did where you had higher ceilings and then lower ceilings. The issue with this for us is that it actually removes a lot of this decorative design at the bottom. So I had bought a lot of things for the bathroom based off this print when we were in our other place and I really want to keep this. So instead what I'm going to be doing is removing a lot of the extra fabric at the top, so that white portion, and moving where those like grommet hooks are, bringing that row down a little bit so that we remove some of that white, you get to keep the fun leaf pattern, and it works in the new bathroom. So the first thing I'm going to do is I got a shower curtain that is the correct height. So I'm going to use this as my guide to know how long I need this to be. If you wanted to, you could also have taken the measurements for where your curtain rod was. But now what I'm going to see is that I can see that I have this white patch of fabric that I no longer need. So I'm going to be removing that. So here is my good shower curtain that is the size I want. And then I have the shower curtain that I want to hem. And I'm going to measure how much fabric there is that I would need to remove. So when I look at mine, it looks like it's around 12 inches of extra material. I want to keep this top part that has the grommets. That way I'm able to keep the shower curtain hooks on it. And then I do need to take into account some seam allowance. So I'm gonna give it around probably half an inch or so on either side. So at the top, I'm actually going to be cutting half an inch down from those grommets and then a half of an inch up from where I'm going to be attaching this at the bottom. So taking off around 11 inches of material so I can get this to be the same size as the other shower curtain. Once I figured out that measurement, I just went through and cut the material so that I could remove all that extra fabric. I slowly did this to make sure that was a nice straight line. And then I just would go through occasionally and kind of mark where 11 inches was all the way through. Once that cut was complete, I took out the extra material and moved everything down. So this is all the fabric that I'm not going to be using. And then this is what my new shower curtain height will be. So here's the part that has those grommets and then here's the rest of the shower curtain. So now it's just basically time to attach these two together. And there's multiple ways that you can do this. Uh, it ended up actually being a really quick and easy seam. It really depends on how much effort and how much time you want to put into this. Now, if you're someone who you want to make sure that this is very neat and clean looking, I would recommend maybe using a serger or you could do some rolled hems. And I'll kind of show you in a second what that looks like. But so for mine, what I'm going to be doing is I'm using a serger. This material is like a polyester, so it's, it's very prone to fraying and I want to make sure that I don't have to worry about it fraying over time. So with these with right sides together, so I'm just going to go through and pin this up and then use my serger and just take one long seam. This is going to give me a very nice and clean finish and I don't have to worry about it fraying over time. If you do not have a serger though, don't worry. I'm going to show you another way that you can do this so that you don't have to worry about it coming undone or looking messy. So if you are doing a rolled hem, you do not want to just kind of fold it up and over as you're still going to get that raw edge at the bottom. What you're going to do is you're going to leave about an inch and a half seam allowance for the top part and the bottom part, and then you're going to take two rolled hems. Then you're going to be sewing those rolled hems together with right sides together. This will give you that neat and clean finish. Again though, I just used my serger. It was very quick and this was kind of what it looked like at the end. Everything looked really neat on it and all the seams came together really, really well. Now, if you wanted to, at this point, you could top stitch this to give it just like kind of a little definition. You could do this as well if you were doing a rolled hem version too, but I opted to skip it. Now it was time to start working on painting the walls. First thing I had to do was go through and clean all the walls as there was a little dirt and grime left on there that I wanted to remove so that the paint would stick better. I did this on all the walls as well as, as in all the corners to make sure everything was nice and clean. Next, it was time to start painting. 
The color we went with was called Magical Moonlight. It was from Home Depot. I really love how it turned out. When you looked at it, it was a very bright white, but it had undertones of gray and purple and really just made the bathroom pop a lot more. This is a very small space. So after the first coat, you could see that some of the corners still needed to be done, but overall it was really coming together very, very nicely and it covered up that green that was originally here. The second coat, I just went through and really carefully made sure I did all the corners. Any spots that look like you could see the green coming through I just went through and did another coat on those this was what it looked like after the second coat and it was really starting to come together I loved how it was looking and I couldn't wait to take all of that painters tape off once it had dried I slowly removed all the tape I was very carefully so to make sure that I didn't accidentally you know like rip any of the paint off the wall I find it very satisfying though to remove the tape as it was just so fun once I did that, it was time to start doing all some of the other upgrades, including the shower curtain rod. Turns out I bought the wrong size, so be sure to measure your shower curtain rods. I got this from Target though for $8 and it is the correct size. I was able to use the other one in our guest bathroom, so it wasn't a total fail on my part. The one thing I would recommend if you also are getting one of these shower curtain rods from Target is to bring scissors with you as I did slightly struggle with removing the plastic. Once I got the plastic off of the new shower curtain rod, I removed the shower curtain from the previous one and then I made sure that my new rod was the correct size and the tension was good. Once I did that, it was time to start decorating. So here is the final reveal. I'm so excited. And this is what the bathroom now looks like. It's so much brighter. I love the color of the paint on the walls. It has a really nice, pretty glow about it. Here is our shower curtain. It looks so nice in here. I love that you get all that green from the design on it. Here are the matching pictures that I had bought previously that I got to hang those up. And then when you just look around, everything looks a lot fresher, looks a little more modern. I love when you're standing, you can look in the mirror and you can see the pictures behind you. It just gives it a really nice feel. And then we did update some of the hardware on the cabinets and then I had these little plants. The hardware on the cabinets we had already put in right when we moved in as it was missing those, which was kind of like a funny touch. Overall though, this was such a quick and easy project to do. It was about a weekend project. So for home DIY, I feel like that's a really good timeline. I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you inspiration for what to do in your bathroom in 2023. If you like this type of video and want to see more, be sure to like and subscribe.